I get up at five in the morning, get my niece and nephew ready for school, and off to work I go. Uh, my health today is I'll say I'm in tip top shape. I can shed a few pounds, but what woman can't? <laughs> I started feeling like I had like a cold, and I just wasn't getting any better. So I had been coughing, and I just wasn't, I got to the point where I really couldn't eat. Like I couldn't even get up 11 stairs. My daughter was dying. She was literally dying. Raquel had a condition called CTEF, which is uh, old blood clots in the lungs. When we first met Raquel, she was very sick. She was in advanced heart failure from CTEF, and she was near death. I think she probably had less than two or three months to live. You can go through things and, you know, still have a good outcome. We had to take a look and see if there were any providers that could possibly do this in Kentucky. So we did some research. It's well known that UC San Diego has the best uh, endorectomy program probably in the world. He felt like sending her to San Diego uh, would give her the best outcome. He had already spoken to the surgeon out there where he cleared his schedule and said send her out as quickly as possible. Certainly there was extenuating circumstances because the procedure that she needed was out of state. You need that support and care when you're in the hospital. It helps um, your outcomes. Well, my dad going with me, basically he dropped what he had going on, and it meant, it meant a lot. CTEF is the only curable form of pulmonary hypertension, and so there's a surgical cure. Once they removed the clots, her vitals were going back up to normal. Raquel looked amazing when she came back to clinic. And after the surgery, I felt like a whole new person. Like, I felt like I haven't felt like that in all my life. It was definitely was a collaboration between our inpatient team, outpatient services, case management, our network solutions, regulatory, our state partners, the physician reviewer, our medical director, and also Raquel's physician. I think it's really important for providers to have an open dialogue with insurance companies for multiple reasons but primarily to get the best outcome for the patient like in this case. I help find solutions. It's just what I like to do. If it was no Kathy, it probably would be no Raquel right now. And I've never even met Kathy but I feel like if I seen her I would probably run up to her and hug her. I love the woman having you met her. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> you don't know me. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm Kathy. I'm gonna say you I can tell that she genuinely cared for my well-being. I don't give up very easily. <laughs> the team that was put together for me was amazing. I believe Kathy felt like Raquel was her child. You have just made my year. It was a perfect process. You know, we are committed to those we serve. We want to get them the best outcomes we can. We want them to get the right care at the right place. When I can make even the slightest change that can help a member, <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. To us, it's, it's not a, just a chart that's coming in for us to review for medical necessity. This is a person. She gave us the privilege to help coordinate care for her. I'm gonna start by taking my classes for child development. I'm just so thankful. There's no way you could have went through all that and it just be you. When her case came in, she was in such dire need. I knew we would find a way, and we did. It's amazing to have support. Anthem, I feel like we're family. Ha, ha, ha.